Hello and welcome to my next video on oscillators. So far we've talked about the phase shift oscillator, the A-stable multivibrator, and the Veen bridge oscillator. Now we're going to look at another variation on that theme, which is actually two oscillators. We have the Colpitts oscillator and the Hartley oscillator, which are almost identical. Let's begin by looking at our phase shift oscillator. And we'll modify that to be a... Oh, we'll see which one we do when we get there. So here is our phase shift oscillator. Just a standard small signal amplifier, basically. We're going to feed this back over into the base with some capacitors in series. And that's going to be what it is. Here's some more resistors and another resistor being quick about this. And remember the phase shift oscillator works because we are sending in negative feedback because as the base voltage goes up, the collector voltage goes down, but we're going to delay it so that when our next cycle comes along, by that time this signal gets to the base, it is in line with that. So as this is trying to go up, our feedback is pushing it up and gives a little more energy into it. So what we need to do is delay that feedback just at the right amount. And so at the frequency we want this to oscillate at, we want to calculate our phase shift for these three. I'm just going to move this over just to remind us that it works with that capacitor. We want these three RC circuits to have a total phase shift of 180 degrees. So we're going to have them equal capacitors and equal resistors such that each phase has 60 degrees of phase shift or should I say each stage has 60 degrees of phase shift, and that will give us just the right amount of delay to make this oscillate. So there is your phase shift oscillator. So what are other ways that we could cause a delay and phase shift besides three resistor networks? Well, how about Well, before we do that, let's just take a look at a particular circuit, and that is called a tank circuit. Be sure to go to the AC course if you are not following this, if you have not studied the AC to understand what these do. Here we have an inductor and a capacitor. And what this circuit is going to do is if we get some energy into it, it's going to start sending energy back and forth between the capacitor and the inductor. So one way to look at this is that, let's take a look at the time where this has a lot of charge on this side. So a lot of highly charged, but no current. Current is going to flow through the inductor. And so that capacitor is going to try to discharge and equalize through the inductor. But of course, that inductor is going to fight that current. Well, it's fighting it is because it's building up a magnetic field. So we're going to get a magnetic field around this inductor. And eventually we're going to get a steady current flowing through the inductor, discharging the capacitor. But as that capacitor discharges, it's not going to be able to keep that current going. And so that magnetic field is going to collapse, if you will, and put energy into it and push electrons over until we have this charged in the opposite direction. And so now we have this fully charged and no current flowing through it. And now, since this is charged, it wants to discharge the other way, and it does exactly the same thing, but in the opposite direction. And it just keeps going back and forth and back and forth until it runs out of energy. Of course, it runs out of energy because of resistance in these wires converting the energy to heat, and it'll last only a few cycles. So if we look at the voltage right here, we'll see that voltage going up and down and up and down and up, except we're going to lose energy and it's going to dampen out. So what we need to do is give it a little kick at just the right time, right about there, Give it just a little bit of a kick. And right there, give it another little kick. Here, give it another kick. Just enough to keep that oscillation going. Another way to look at this is that the energy in the coil acts like water slashing back and forth in a bathtub. It goes this side and that side, this side and that side. And the capacitor acts like a reservoir, like you have standpipes at the ends that can hold a lot of water and store the energy. And so the energy goes back and forth. But regardless, the energy goes back and forth at a particular frequency. And that frequency, known as the resonant frequency, is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of LC. And I have another video where I show where that formula comes from. 
So we just decide what frequency we want this to oscillate at and pick a capacitor and an inductor that fit this formula to give us the frequency we want. So now all we have to do is somehow hook that up into this amplifier to kick energy back in with every cycle. So how are we going to do that? Well, first let's make a slight modification to that tank circuit. We're going to split the capacitor, so two capacitors. And one thing we have to remember is if we put two capacitors in series, they act like a smaller capacitor. So to figure out the total capacitance, we have to use the product over sum. Just remember that our total capacitance is going to be product over sum of the two capacitors. But if they're equal, the total capacitance will be half of either capacitor. And what we're going to do is run this to ground. Now let's see what happens when we get this thing ringing. Let's look at the point where this is fully charged. Some positives there. And um, I'll go ahead and show the negatives and the positives here. Because remember, what do these look like when they're fully charged? They pretty much look like a battery. So positive, negative, positive, negative, and there's our ground halfway between. Okay. So now we have a high positive voltage here and a high negative voltage there. So, and ground is somewhere in the middle. Let's say at this point we have 5 volts and 5 volts. Therefore, this is going to be plus 10 volts. Well, let's uh, just make it plus 5 volts. And this will be negative 5 volts. So there is our voltage across there at the moment with, of course, 0 volts here. What's going to happen is that these capacitors together are going to act like one capacitor, but they're going to discharge through the inductor. I'm going to get that current through there. It's going to build up the magnetic field. And at some point, they're going to be equalized. So zero volts everywhere. But now we have that current flowing, and we have that energy in the inductor that's going to collapse as that current tries to decrease. That inductor, that magnetic field is going to collapse and push energy into it and keep it going. And so now it's going to push it over until that's charged like positive, positive, Let's just do completely reverse it here. Now this is negative 5 volts, and this is positive 5 volts. So what do we see? At each end of the cycle, the opposite ends of this are opposite voltage. And so if we put a oscilloscope here, let's make it a dual trace scope. Bring in two traces. What are those traces going to look like? Well, let's erase that oscilloscope and just look at it down here. Here's one trace, and here's the other trace. I'm ignoring the fact that we're going to lose energy. They're 180 degrees out of phase. Oh, okay. So let's say I take this tank circuit, And here's our ground. I'm going to let's ground that right there. I am going to put that tank circuit right here. Put this to the base, put that to the collector. Now what's that going to do? If we do nothing else, if we just put some energy into that, if we don't even have any power up here, what are we going to see? We're going to see that energy going back and forth through this. We're going to see at this point here, we're going to see that voltage going up and down and up and down. So voltage going up and down and up and down. Here it's going to be 180 degrees out of phase, down and up and down and up. Well, look at that. We have a 180 degree phase shift from here to here. And of course, remember that we're going to have a 180 degree phase shift from here to here. So that matches that. That matches that. There is our full positive feedback because we get a 180 degree phase shift to here and another 180 degree phase shift to here. That satisfies the feedback requirement. We're going to have the time delay because of the time it takes for these to charge and discharge. That's really not necessarily the best way to look at it, but we are going to get this circuit that's feeding the energy in. It comes here, feeds through, comes back out 180 degrees out of phase, and so it gives this a little kick right at the right time that that wants to go down. And so this is going to make an oscillator. Let's 
put a little connection dot there just to be correct. So very simple, oversimplified really, but uh, will that work? If you get the gain just right, yes, that will, will work. Here's a circuit that actually works, that if you want to give it a try, I don't want to go through all the calculations. Like any engineer, you're going to look at what people did before you and then build on that. You're not going to reinvent the wheel. So there's a working oscillator of this type. And oh, what type is it? Oh, it says right there, it's a Colpitts oscillator. So we recognize the Colpitts oscillator because of the split capacitor. I made a proof of concept of the next type of oscillator, which I'll talk about in a moment, but remember that because it'll work the same as this. And I'll just show how you can make one quick and dirty just to prove that you can do it if you don't want to go through building the circuit that we showed here. So that is the Colpitts oscillator. I wanted to put a Z at the end. Colpitts oscillator with the split capacitor. Now we're going to turn this into a Hartley oscillator. Let's see, how are we going to do that? I'll do it this way. All I did, make sure we ground that, all I did was split the inductor instead of the capacitor. So I'm doing these both in one video because the only difference is which reactive component we have split. But it works exactly the same way. Whatever goes on here, let's keep that in phase with what's going on up here. So let's erase that. So whatever goes on over here, down, up, down, is going to be the opposite, up, down, up. And so that's going to give us our 180 degree phase shift into the amplifier to make this oscillator work. And of course you calculate what frequency you want to with the same formula, the resonant circuit. And since these are inductors, to calculate the total inductance, you just simply add them together. So here's L1, L2. So our total L equals L1 plus L2, easy enough. And so using that, we can calculate exactly what inductance we need to make this Hartley oscillator work. Now, as I promised, I did make a proof of concept. I've never needed one of these, but I did a proof of concept using an op amp once. So let's go ahead, oh, let's put that up here before we erase it all. This is a Hartley oscillator. There you go. Hartley oscillator looks just like the Colpitts oscillator, but we have the inductor split instead of the capacitor. So let's uh, draw a proof of concept circuit that you can make. We'll start out with an operational amplifier. Now we haven't talked about those yet in the course, but of course you could take a sneak peek anytime you want to. But for now, we'll just make it a simplified explanation. An operational amplifier is an amplifier with two inputs and an output, one for negative feedback, one for positive feedback. Probably not the best way to put that, but it'll do for what we're explaining right now. And we need some negative feedback, so we will make a voltage divider to connect here for negative feedback. And this will go to ground right there. And I'm going to put one inductor there and the other inductor here and our capacitor right there. This will go there and that will go there. And of course our operational amplifier goes to its positive and negative power supplies. So there is a circuit that will work and the way you make it really simple is to get the gain just right, I'm going to replace those feedback resistors with a potentiometer. Uh, 1K, 10K, doesn't really matter. So here we have some negative feedback going this way, some positive feedback going that way. And what you're going to do is power this up, put an oscilloscope over here just to see that it works. Then you're going to start tweaking the gain and when you get to just the right amount of gain, it should break right into oscillation at the frequency determined by these components here. So very simple to make, just one potentiometer, two inductors and one capacitor, and you should be able to make that oscillate. So that is the Colpitts oscillator and the Hartley oscillator. So if you want to help other people find these videos and learn electronics technology, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel and helps people find these videos. Be sure to subscribe. 
That also helps people find the videos and hit that gray bell when you do if you want to be notified when I put up new videos. And to study electronics technology and perhaps become a certified electronics technician or get a jump start in your studies in electrical engineering or just study for your own edification, you can go to vocademy.net and take my free course. To help me put these videos up and to keep Vocademy free, you can go to patreon.com slash vocademy and pledge your support. And be sure to look there to see what benefits you get by pledging. A big thank you to my patrons and my other donors. I could not do this without your support and thanks to everyone for watching.